There are two reasons to increase your tire pressure beyond what's recommended by your vehicle manufacturer. One reason may save your life, the other may save you some money. Let me explain today as we talk tires. So I had the opportunity to drive through parts of Europe about a month ago, and my rental car had the following tire pressure specs, which I thought were so interesting that I wanted to share them with you. So you'll notice here that for speeds below 160 kilometers or 100 miles per hour, the recommended tire pressure for the front tires is 38 PSI, and for the rear it's 37 PSI, which is no big deal, it's kind of normal, right? However, if, you, if you're planning to go above those speeds, above 160 or above 100 miles per hour, let's say you're, you're planning a, a trip on one of those European highways where there are no speed limits, well, the recommended tire pressure jumps to 41 PSI for both front and rear tires. So why would you need a higher uh, tire pressure at those high speeds? I mean, how can that make any sense? Well, the answer to that question and the word of the day is deflection. Well, what does it mean? Well, in short, deflection is the difference in the measurement between the center of the axle and the road and the center of the axle and the top of the tire. So you can imagine those two lengths as the tire is rolling down the road. Now, the greater the difference in those two measures, the greater the deflection, and the more the sidewalls have to flex. And the more the sidewalls have to flex, the more they generate heat, and the more stress the tires are exposed to, which in turn increases the possibility of a tire failure, and that's not something you want when you're moving at mind-numbing speeds on the Autobahn, for example. So imagine a typical tire rolling down a city street at, let's say, 30 miles or, or 50 kilometers an hour. Deflection isn't a big deal or a big problem because the tire probably spins about seven times per second at that speed. Boost the speed to 70 miles or 110 kilometers per hour, and now that same tire spins about 16 times per second. Now increase that speed to 150 miles or about 240 kilometers per hour. And now that same tire has to spin about 30 times per second. That's a, a lot of deflection, a lot of flexing of the sidewall, generating a lot of heat, a lot of stress, which can eventually lead to tire failure. So this is one scenario where increasing the tire pressure is advised and where it can save your life because all that deflection can be avoided just by increasing the tire pressure. Now let's take a look again at that same tire label. You'll notice that there's an eco mode recommendation for tire pressure. In other words, if you'd like to reduce fuel consumption, well, you can increase your tire pressure to that same 41 PSI that was recommended for higher speeds, even if you don't plan to drive at those higher speeds. That's because by reducing deflection, even at lower speeds, you're improving rolling resistance, which in turn improves fuel economy and therefore saves you money on gas or allows you to travel further on a charge if you own an electric vehicle. So should you increase your tire pressure in order to improve fuel economy and save money? You could. Just keep in mind that although you'll save on fuel, you may find that your tires wear out just a little bit faster. And you'll notice this especially in the center of the tire. The other drawback is that your ride may not be as comfortable as you're used to because now the sidewalls aren't flexing as much, which means they're not absorbing bumps as much. But if you keep your eye on the tire wear, you can certainly benefit from the same kind of eco tire pressure recommendations they use in Europe. Just don't overdo it. A couple of extra PSI should be fine, but too much and you may end up blowing out a tire, especially if you go over the tire pressure limit that's actually indicated on the tire sidewall. Please don't ever do that. So let me know in the comments below if you're planning to boost your tire pressure in order to try to boost your fuel economy, and let me know how that works out. And if you've ever had a chance to drive at those breakneck speeds on the European highways, well, let us know what that experience was like. Maybe some of us can put it on our bucket lists. Now, tire pressure is one thing to consider. How about the speed rating of your tires? If you'd like to find out how speed ratings impact performance and handling, check out the video over here. And as always, thanks for watching.